Uh, today, I would like to present the topics using open source software to build an industrial grade embedded Linux platform from scratch. I'm AZ Lin, uh, work for Mosa, a Taiwan company, and I also a cybersecurity fundamental specialist and Debian developer. You can reach me in this uh, website. Uh, before this presentation, I would like to make a survey. How many people is familiar with uh, industrial platform? Could you show your hand? Okay. So, actually, this topic, uh, this presentation is quite difficult for me because I met over 200 slides in my first version. Uh, I try hard and I cut it into 87 slides. So I will uh, try to skim and finish this presentation in time. Industrial um, platforms such like edge, industrial computing, and network. According to the industrial application is failed, such like a rail, smart grid, and some yeah, energy. And those, uh, this type of uh, product is quite wide range. We can have a, a microcontroller or a server level. So we might uh, have a lot of choices on this. So before using open source software, something we should know. That is copyright pattern. Copyright is very, very important for the open source and which re related to the open source license. Okay, another is pattern. So, for the open source copyright, luckily the Linux Foundation created a project named OpenChain. It's identified key recommended uh, process for effective open source management. We can easily to manage our open source via this project. It uh, teaches us how to manage, how to uh, control our usage with the open source. Another is Open Invention Network. It's a, a shared defensive patent pool that can uh, protect our Linux. So again, we have to take care of open source copyright very carefully. We have to use the process tooling and support. We have OpenChain, SPDX, Fosology. Both of them are in a foundation project. We use OpenChain to uh, control, manage the open source. We use uh, SPDX to exchange the software package. We use Fosology to scan in the license. OK, back to the topic. Industrial harsh environment, such like rails, grid, uh, transport, factor, factory automation, oil and gas. There are some common uh, basic features, such like longevity, stability, and security. And there are also some advanced uh, features, such like performance, real time, resource limited, and safety. Beware of that. Uh, some of the feature needs a special hardware, so we need to evaluate in the very beginning. Okay, this is the life cycle of industrial grade and bad news platform. As you can see, we have a development phase, maintenance phase. In the development phase, we have a system preparation and building and testing. In the maintenance phase, we have a long-term test and regular update. For the industrial product and the platform, it is very important in this phase. That is because the life cycle in industrial uh, platform usually more than 10 years. So we need to take care about the maintenance phase very carefully. In the deployment, uh, in the uh, development phase, as you can see, this is the uh, prototype or embedded device. We have hardware, we have architecture dependent firmware, such like ARM, um, uh, 
and some bios. And those we have loader, kernel, kernel, and uh, system core interface inside. GitLab C in this system and user application, they are in the root file system. So we have user space and kernel space. First of all, we have to choose the proper loader. The loader is trying to uh, initiate the uh, hardware and uh, load the loader inside the DRAM. And then load the second loader to initialize others and then uh, loading the Linux kernel. And then the Linux kernel will de decompress itself. So there are some category for the loader. Uh, typically, we will use the U-boot in ARM product and the GRUV in x86 product. But uh, for some experts, they will use the core boot or IF find. In kernel, there are two main kernel. The first is Linux kernel, and the second is preemptive RT kernel. The Linux kernel typical are uh, suitable for the performance and the resource limited target application. Before, I, before maybe 10 years ago, in resource limited application, uh, we usually use the micro C Linux. But in the recently, uh, Linux kernel support no MMU architecture and support the tiny kernel. And those, we can use the Linux kernel in some resources limited uh, platform. And for real-time kernel, it's suitable for real-time function safety and resource-limited uh, target application. By the way, uh, I have uh, listed some uh, reference for real-time application, such like Synomine or RTAI. OK, if once we decided the type of kernel, we have to get the kernel. So there are many source. The first is SOC board support package kernel. That is BSP kernel. So this kernel was provided by SOC vendor. If we um, use that kernel, it's caused some issues, like uh, different SOC might use different version of kernel. That means if we have more than 10 SOC, we might maintain 10 version of kernel in the same time. The uh, most important that the lifetime is unsure. So let's take a look at uh, LTS, long term support, uh, long term stable kernel. As you can see, the Greg and Ben Hutchins maintain five kernels here, five version of kernel. So uh, uh, the longest time is about six years. It attend the software uptime for stable kernel only accept bug fixes and security fixes. But six years is not enough for us, especially in the industrial application. So we have another choice, that is LTSI long-term support initiative. This is a, a Linux Foundation collaboration, co collaborative project. It's based on LTS and it has an auto test framework. It also adds some new features inside the kernel. The next is CIP, Civil Infrastructure Platform. This is also the Linux Foundation Collaborative Project. Um, we also joined this project because we want to support the Linux kernel more than 10 years. So we have a, a supportive strategy. We have auto uh, test framework. And we, our goal is to maintain the Linux kernel more than 10 years. This is also the project in Linux Foundation. So this is a big figure that you can see. The Linux kernel, LTSI, and CIP, the relationship. This is the table version. As you can see, the maintenance period um, SOC vendor is unknown, LTS 2 plus, LTS is 2 plus, and CIP kernel is 10 plus. And for the features, 
the ISO CBSP and the LTS accept bug fixes and security fixes. But in LTSI, it accepts new features. So does in CIP kernel. So the latest version, the LTS kernel is 4.19 and CIP is 4.19, but uh, LTSI is 4.14. For the real-time kernel supported, only CIP kernel support the real-time kernel. So that is the, the comparison. Just like I mentioned, there are many applications such like the performance real time. Is that mutual exist? Yes, some of. If you en enable the real time, it might decrease your performance. So what if I want to uh, enable a product with different application to fulfill the multiple scenarios? In ARM based, we can use the FIT, front end image tree. These formats can support the devices to support a different kernel and different application. As you can see, this is an example. You can list your image here and another image uh, below. So we can have multiple kernel, multiple refi system in the same product. And those we can configure this product to fulfill the target application. The next is user space. I want to uh, address the ELISA. It's a safety critical systems project. This is also the Linux Foundation collaborative project. This project aims to provide the solution in functional safety uh, application. So it's used a sale to Linux MP and the real time kernel inside. Uh, to fulfill the IEC 61508 standard. So if you are um, focused on functional safety, you can have a look in this project and sell to Linux MP and real-time kernel. For others, the library. This is a very important for the system. There are some uh, open source projects there. For example, GLabC, uh, micro C lab C and G next generation and muscle. And their lessons are quite different. And as you can see, they are, um, also have some different features. For example, G lab C supports stable ABI that was compatible and for simple version. And some security uh, feature. And for micro C lab C and G, it's mainly to support the NoMU architecture and for tiny size. So if your application is for uh, resources limited, you can consider to use the micro C lab C next generation, this tool. And the muscle is also uh, suitable for resource limited uh, application and security application. But please be aware of that, the year 2038 problem. This is the uh, issue similar with year 2000. The 32-bit system can be reprinted the dates from 1901 and 2038. As you can see, when, you, when we get the dates of this time, we will, uh, the integer will overflow in 32-bit architecture. You may, uh, you may mention that there are still 19 years from now. But as I mentioned, the industrial uh, platform usually have a very long life cycle. So we should uh, focus this issue now. Otherwise, it's hard to fix. So when you choose the uh, C library, you should consider this problem also. OK, next, the init system. In this system, the first application which will be executed by the kernel is managing uh, the application and services. There are some uh, open source tools here. For example, BusyBox, SysVinit, SystemD, OpenRC. Typically, in the past, the embedded system will use the BusyBox because it's very tiny and easy to use. However, the industrial uh, uh, platform 
are meant to uh, internet is the trend. So many devices will use the like uh, system D or OpenRC. So you can choose your own init system depend, depends on your application. So I also list the Zebra library supported. For example, Bitbox support uh, Michael C uh, dash next generation and Julep C muscle. And for system D only supports Julep C. So if you want to use the Michael C Linux engine, system D is not suitable for you. The next one is to choose the proper uh, root file system. Uh, there are uh, many open source projects to provide the root file system. For example, BusyBox, Yaktor, Bluetooth, and Debian. Uh, you may uh, mention that Yaktor is not a root file system. Yaktor is just a tool. Yes, exactly. So it depends on the meta layer. It can provide a root file system. So uh, BusyBox contains 300 to 400 applicants. So it's not a package, it's just inside the busy box. So it could be the very tiny, but uh, a functional limited. It's also uh, only support the uh, micro C, lab C, and G lab C. And in Yakto, the famous project in Nina's foundation, the lifetime is only support the previous two releases. And the C library only support the G lab C and muscle. For build root, the famous uh, Rufi system and build tool in embedded system. The maintenance period is only uh, one year. The number of package is more than 2,000. It support uh, GLAB C muscle and micro C, lab C next generation. And the last one is Debian. Debian, the maintenance, uh, the maintenance period of Debian is five, five years for specific architecture. It supports more than 50,000 package in Debian. It also supports GLAB C and Muscle. And yeah, there is some myth. You may say Debian is very heavy and yeah, very fat, very, very easy, very not very hard to customize. That is not true. You can customize the Debian into a tiny profile easily. So we can create a very tiny uh, Rufi system for Debian in our embedded Linux. So, yeah, we have Blooder, we have Kernel, we have Rufi system and something like that. So we have to have uh, system development tools like uh, Yaktor, Big Roots, or some Debian specific uh, tools. As you can see, uh, you can use the Yaktor to build the BusyBox roof system. You can use the Bulut to build the Bulut roof system. You can use many tools to build the Debian roof system. So I also uh, list the tool chain supported here and the license belong. So you can choose what you want. And I want to mention that uh, Live Build is a very powerful tool for Debian development. Uh, many uh, directive uh, distribution use the Live Build to customize the Debian, such like Kali. Okay, so we use Debian. Why? Because its, it's stability is as a procedure that unstable, testing stable, scalability from a laptop server to embed devices. And with system security, the Debian has the security tracker. Long-term support, five years, and multiple architecture, and the end is more than 50,000 package inside. In the build and testing, it's a very important for industrial uh, platform. So, if you want to get more information, you can check this in uh, reference in the end. This is our testing and uh, development uh, procedure. As you can see, the developer fork the git and made some changes. After all, they will send the patches to uh, send the pull request. 
After that, this will uh, jump to CI/CD automatic release pipeline. This pipeline will uh, result the yes or no to our to our team, and we can know pass or not. This is the CI/CD automatic release pipeline. CI means continuous integration. C CD means continuous uh, deployment. So we have a, a CI, CD, CD. Building, deploying, testing, and release. So we use a GitLab and Jenkins to monitor the status of the branch. There are some changes. We will trigger the Jenkins. Uh, the select node will do some static program analysis. We use the Jenkins to uh, manage the static testing cases. So, you have, as you know, the Linux kernel is quite large. So, we spend lots of time in compiling. We use the uh, distributed compiler to reduce the compile time. This time, uh, here we use ice cream, which is created by SUSE. So we use the distributed compiler to reduce our time. And those, we can have more time to do the test. So as you can see, we have the building form. So in the delivery, we use Lava. This is a tool uh, made by Ninaro. We can use this tool to um, make some deployment to our testing form. Once we get the uh, uh, binary and the image from the Jenkins, we will send a job file via the XML RPC. And it's sent to Lava Master. It will, it will dispatch job via 0MQ. And then uh, we will download the image from the Jenkins and send the uh, image to the devices. The next, we will trigger a test framework. And this test framework will send the test cases and start to test. We have several tests, such like dynamic program analysis and platform test, to ensure our quality of the product. So there is a uh, embedded test framework I would like to address. This is Friego. Friego in Spanish means fire. This is a test framework for testing embedded Linux. So uh, LTS project, which is the Linux Foundation collaborated project, use this framework to make the test. And there are over 100 pre package tests already. So after that, we can get the result and send to the, uh, the developer. OK, the next is maintenance phase. In the maintenance phase, we have a long-term test. Long-term test means longevity testing, reliable testing, robustness testing, and secure scanning. We have to do this test uh, 24 hours, seven days, because uh, we, are, we have a very, very long life cycle for our product. So the test cases are managed by the test framework. The first is the longevity. It's mainly to test the hardware, so we have endurance and capability test. The next one is robustness. We have a fuzzing test, and I also list the test tool in the end. The next one is the reliable, reliability test. We have a power failure test, reboot test, and regression test. Uh, you might be curious that why we have to uh, reboot to test our product. Because we have several issues before. Sometimes the system will hand during the reboot. And the root cause is that uh, the driver or the application has some uh, deadlock issue in, in some situations. So it's, what, it's caused the uh, devices and the platform to be hand. And the last is a security test. We have a daily test for CVE. So as you can see, we will scan the platform every day to generate a uh, security report. As you know, the last week we have a SAC, S-A-C-K, security issue in kernel. So we can 
usually to get the result in each prayer form that is there any CV inside. And for stable kernel maintainers, we will have the kernel CI to uh, test our kernel. This is automatic Linux kernel testing tool. So it will detect basic report and fix a regression on upstream kernel trees before release. We, have, we can have more confidence uh, before releasing the kernel. So it's a short test on many configurations. That means we can test many boards, many SOC, many devices via the kernel CI to make sure that uh, each changes is okay. The next one is reproducible build. This is a very amazing uh, project. It's uh, also the open source project. It's created an independent uh, variable, ver verifiable path from source to binary. It's ensured the build have identical results. And then we can prove the source code has, has not been tempered or modified. It's very important for the security. So I also list the open source testing tool below. You can uh, have some look. So the CICD LT, uh, are concepts of software engineering instead of tools of the procedures. Because the tools or uh, procedures could be phased out, so we need to focus on the software, uh, concepts of software engineering. OK. We come to the uh, next step is a regular update. As I mentioned before, the industrial platform, the product, we have a very, very long uh, life cycle. So if we want to update the security issue or some bug fix, we have to uh, update the devices remotely because the, in the industrial application, the platform usually to put in the uh, humanless uh, uh, press. So we need to uh, have the software update to fulfill the demand, like uh, bug fixes, security fixes, new feature over 10 years. At least some component might be updated. For example, the peripheral devices of firmware Broader device tree in Linux kernel, Lufa system, system configuration and replication. Typically, we uh, update the uh, application more often. And some uh, yeah, Linux kernel depends on the situation. But I also uh, list some risk in updating the software. We, we uh, fail to update the device may uh, become the stone. So I leave some uh, requirement here for industrial uh, Linux platform. For example, the hash environment, middle of nowhere, bandwidth limi limited, multiple versions supported, multiple devices, and then longevity. These are uh, no more requirement for the industrial platform. So the media of the software update, we can use the wire cable, OTA, portable shortage, storage, or on-site. But typically, we don't use this solution. It's too much cost. I also list uh, some software update requirement here. For basic features, we should have a fail safe, rollback, size reduction. Signature, a multiple storage support, new system integration, remote access. For additional uh, features such like uh, online and offline updates, encryption, data updates, successful update uh, detection, and proactive updating. And for the industrial embedded devices approach, we can use the image block best. It's a quite large size, but it's much simple. And file base, package base, and database. You can choose what you want depends on your demand and uh, your application. 
you need to consider the partition architecture here. So you can have some design in your embed device, and also you can make the best update mechanism. There are some uh, design here, for example, asymmetric and symmetric firmware update. This is the asymmetric firmware update uh, design. This is a symmetric firmware update design. For this design, uh, we will have some downtime because we only have the main OS. But once, it, once we, we get dead, we have a recovery OS. So we have set, fail safe. But for the symmetric firmware update, we have backup uh, OS. So we will keep alive always. But the drawback is that we have double copy of OS. So we, you can choose your uh, design based on your application. So typically, in the very low-end devices, we will use uh, this design. But in some uh, high-end application or devices, we will use a symmetric design. It depends on your storage and your mechanism. So I list some open source project for software updates, the SW. That means software updates, and IUC OS3. So uh, software update and IUC support fail safe and rollback feature. They all um, also support the Delta updates. Signature for security. They support multiple uh, storage. For Yakto and Brilliant. In, in my experience, I use software updates. Uh, because this is very easy to use and suitable for embedded devices. So there are some comparison for others. Software update and IUC support asymmetric and symmetric updates. And they support the ima image base and file base. The license uh, is GPL and LGPL. Okay, this is my conclusion that we have to plan our uh, design and target application. The industrial application is uh, controversy, stability, and security. We need to collaborate with the community. So we use many open source. And last one is we cannot the best solution, but the suitable solution for our application. That is my presentation. Thank you. So, yep. Do you have any question? I'll present very quickly because, yeah, many slides. Do you have any question? Okay, thank you.